A lady writes to me called uh, Julie Nelson. She says, some time ago, before Easter, you played a track from one of the big show bands called What Color Is God's Skin? Yeah, we came to the conclusion that it was tan. Uh, if possible, could you let me know the name of the show band and the CDLP? The track is available on... Well, it's not available anywhere. It's by a band called The Freshmen. And it's uh, kind of a well, kind of a pilot CD, really. There's talk of it being available during the course of the summer, but uh, not just yet. Uh, I looked for that this morning, but I couldn't find it because I was late for the program, and that's one of the reasons why I was late. But I'll, I'll find it this afternoon, and I'll play it for you tomorrow. It's Billy Brown, the late Billy Brown, and The Freshman, plus Derek Dean, of course. What? It was sitting behind you in your, up at your desk, on top of the, uh, the, the CD player. You're, ver you're very low, I can't hear you. I looked at it. You're very low, I can't hear you. <laughs> I know exactly what You're very low, I can't hear you. No, if you remember, this, the freshmen have two CDs. Yes. Number one and two. The one you behind me is number one. All oh, right. The one on which, what color is God's skin on, is number two. Well, which is, is the one I can't find. It's in my drawer somewhere, but I have no time to find it. Sorry. Because I'm too late. All right. I didn't get in here until... I was in before you today. I can't understand why you were down here first. You're very low, I can't hear you. Paddy... You're very low, I can't hear you. I'll have to turn you off. Paddy, Stewarty and Brian tried to follow your directions for Dublin and they ended up in Dungannon. Well, Dungannon's a great place if you can't find Dublin. Yeah. The Ranfurly Arms shall live forever in my mind. They were heading to Dublin. To I met a girl off. in the Ranfurly Arms one night. She was the most beautiful girl I've ever met in my life. And she was from Belfast. She had long, blonde, flaxen hair. And she was absolutely beautiful. I'll never forget that as long as I live. The ran for the arms in Dungannon. And she was up in Dun Dungannon for a holiday. And she let from me where? From Belfast. Right. And she right. came up to Belfast on a holiday and she, she fell in love with me. And we had a wonderful week. And then she had to go back to Poglass. What was her name? I can't remember. You do? What's her name? I'm not going to tell her, her name. She may name. No, I'm not going to. No, she just may be first, married and have children. No, no, no. First name. I'm not going to tell you anything. Jane. Jane. With blonde hair. Yeah, she was lovely. Oh, I remember it well. When was that? What year was that? Oh, 71. Exactly. 68. <laughs> 19, uh, 1968. 65. No, was it 65? 65, yes. Yeah. 35 right. years ago. I was only one. Right. In, in 1965... She looked at me out of my pram and she said, What a lovely little baby. I'm going to take this baby home. Uh, she did four years for kidnapping. Jane. Long blonde hair. From Bally's. Belfast. Bally's. Had, a, had a holiday in... Dungannon. Yeah. Her name is John. Jane. She's, she's from Bally Right, okay. She's one of the most beautiful girls I ever met. Right. Is she still around? I don't know. Well, we'll try and find her. She loved me. She thought I was wonderful. Then she found out yeah. the truth. Anyway, never mind that. Uh, that's. Uh, in one. I know, I know. I just got distracted there. I've got to that stage now. Every once in a while I go into a reverie of nostalgia because, you know, I've, my life is nearly over. I feel as if it's important to look back on the happy times. You, you, it's different for you. You have no happy times. You have no past. Yeah. But you have nothing to look back on because you never did anything. But see, people like me who did... You see, I always claim that you should do whatever you want to and then you can look back on it. You I see, was you're homesick in Birmingham. Ah, you were always afraid to do anything in case you'd be caught. You have nothing to look back on. You have no happy memories. I robbed an orchard once. Ah, <laughs> Cox's orange pippins. I did? Cox's orange pippins. My arse. Anyway, I can't hear you. You're too low. One. Yes. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Sorry for keeping you. Who's... Is that Rosalind? But I tell you, that's... <laughs> I couldn't hear this quite down there, and I can hardly hear you. Well, I can't understand what seems to be your problem. Have you got well, your hearing aid? Well, you your knobs. Pardon? Twiddle your knob. No, no, not on bank holidays. <laughs> can you... Can, what do you mean you can't hear me? Uh, you're very low, aren't you, Sean? Uh, he's, he's low deliberately. Is he? I'm not low, I'm high. Oh, you hi. Can I just say uh, four words to you? What do you want? Nothing, don't be cheeky. What do you want? Did you get an award? Did I what? Did, did that Radio Foyle get an award? Radio Foyle did get a, well, well the Radio Oscar last Monday, this well, time last uh, week. Excuse me. What did you get it for? We got it for a station of the year. Yes. All and, over Great Britain. And you had your listeners listening. And what do the listeners get only oil to take your pee? The listeners get a load of oil blarney, that's what they get. I hear you say an hour say an hour, too. No, I just said that to him because you was talking uh, well, about... Well, you shouldn't say that. I know I shouldn't. Uh, uh, no, what a month now. Especially on a bank holiday. But the cocks is orange pippins, what do you expect? It's four o'clock, bitches. Will you let me get my message in? Okay, go ahead. There's a little... Uh, 
lady, a young girl, lost a cat on Saturday night. How unfortunate. It's a Persian cat. Is it? And she rescued it from a place, and it was all matted and all, and she brought it up. It was all what? All matted. Matted? Yes, and it couldn't lie down or nothing. She brought it to the bed, and she got it shaved from the neck down, Mm -hmm. and brought a coat for it and kept it on. And it got out on Saturday night down by Bond Street there. And no, she never got it back. No, it's a pure Persian. We've got the papers for it, but... Well, was it carrying the papers with it? No, it wasn't. We have them, and it's, it was no good to nobody because it couldn't show it. And, uh, no. Well, yeah, you know, what you're saying is the Persian is naked from the neck down. Yes, and uh, we would like very much, you know, maybe somebody would take it on and thought it was lost, or, you know... It'd be very drafty around its own undercarriage, these... Well, uh, now, listen, I was... I'm not saying nothing to you about that. Okay. Well, well, how would you like to be walking around the street with your naked from the neck down? You wouldn't like it, would you? Uh, well, that's up to you. you I mean, you... I might like it. I'm lying out in the back naked. Are you really? Aye. I hope you have a high wall. No, I haven't. I've just got it to the low part of the wall for this. No. You don't want any heart attacks. There are people maybe looking at you may have never have seen anything like I you but before. Well, no, but you see, that's the way they get them excited, you know. Oh, there's men, uh, yeah, there's uh, men, I know men who get turned off by varicose veins. Well, I die, you never <laughs> mind my varicose veins. I believe your legs are like Brussels sprouts. Never mind, no, they're not, you didn't, uh, Daniel cured Daniel, one of them, but he only touched one leg. Uh, uh, do you remember, thing? I must explain to the listeners, you're one of the few people that have been cured by Daniel O'Donnell. I've often claimed that Daniel had the power to heal, but he always laughed at me. And what, Remember one time, long time, years ago, we did the, did the Southside broadcast, and you uh, happened to be there, and Daniel was there, and I asked Daniel to go, and you at that time were troubled by uh, Brussels sprouts on your legs, uh, commonly known as varicose veins. And I, I told Daniel about it, and he went, dear he said, and he went up and he touched your leg, and lo and behold, within two days, your leg had cleared up. I bet mean, you forgot about the cat, too. You gave me a kiss. Well, he didn't kiss the other leg. I advised him against it because there was a foot and mouth scare at the time. And I said to him, I said, what about the other leg? He said, the other leg will look after itself. Uh, <laughs> but it didn't, did it? No, it didn't. No, your it other leg back. deteriorated and morphed, uh, morphed into something horrible. My other leg, the Cougar Duncan. Well, that's uh, shorter than the other, isn't it? <laughs> I must get this book about Hugo. Do you hear this book about Hugo? The no. Story, the Eggman's Apprentice? No. Hugo D. Small but perfectly formed. I must read that by Morris Leach. You're not listening to this program. I am listening to it, and I'm going to tell you this. It's because the levels aren't right. The levels are not right there today. There's something wrong. Mm. What's it? Uh, well, go, on, go on, then. What, what is it you want, then? Oh, I the cat. Yes, sorry. I wanted to tell you about the cat. Well, uh, did and you I, say I, Bond Street? Is that in Derry uh, in the Waterside? Uh, yes. I, I thought you were living in Cyan Mills. Uh, look, I'm doing a favour for a lady. All right, okay. So that's Bond Street area of the Waterside area of Derry Stroke, London Derry. Yes, and it's a, a silver, silver Persian cat. Naked from the neck down. Naked from the neck down. It had to go and it was rescued. And it was in a terrible state when we, whenever she got it. Mm-hmm. And we got it all brought into Savannah, the vet, and we got it all fixed up and cleaned up and bleed. And it has a wee red collar on it and... Uh, like me diamonds, but you know, so they put the glass. So they right. wouldn't have put a pair of knickers on it or something. Well, we had we had already got it as a wee coat. Yes. But then you see, you can't keep the coat on all the time. The hair must grow. The fur must grow. That's right. You can't keep a coat on all no. the time. You have to check it in the cloakroom every so once in a while. Saturday it got away and. Okay. The, the wee girls in a terrible state. Okay then. So anyone uh, out there see a pair? What colour did you say it was? Silver. 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 Yes. Silver. Yes. Well, that's. That's quite unusual. Well, that's, very what few that's what it says on the papers. There's very few semi-naked silver cats uh, running around. Right. So anyone in the Bond Street waterside uh, area of Derry Stroke, London, Derry, sees an odd-looking cat uh, with a kind of a silver head and a pink body and resembles a Persian cat, uh, contact us here at Radio Foil and we'll put them in contact with, uh, indeed, you, and you can uh, in duly uh, contact your friend. That'd be lovely, Derry, okay. but get it because she's in a terrible state about it. Yeah, I have to say it's wonderful to talk to you again. Uh, it's nice to talk to you, but I thought, you know, that uh, all your listeners were getting an iron cross, the medal for listening to you. <laughs> the scourge of the swastika. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, thank you, Rosie. Again, it's nice to talk to you. It's and nice uh, to talk to w- you. We'll be giving Nazi medals to all our listeners. That's right, because we would need them. Okay, well, thank for you very much. Tea? God bless you. I hope it's not God too long before I talk to you again. I'm sure you won't be saying who the hell is it for not for more talking to you. Okay. All right, Gary. Okay. Any word of any man in your 
your life coming no, in? No, no, I was thinking go and get my cards ready to see if there's anything exciting on the horizon, but no. Is the same man still calling round every no, day round the back? I'm aware of that road to it too. Is I think I'll go back again. I got you miss him coming round every I'm day. Must, I must have all the men. I remember the day no, I was done in your house. No, but the houses now, you know, won't be saved me. And they might, you know, be a, you never would know. I think you need a man every day. Aye. I've always People thought that. I've said, you, I said that to you before. Hugo's no good to you. He's good. Oh, dear, no, he doesn't even bother about me. No I, know, I know, I know, I know. I know. You see, well, that's what I'm telling you. When they get a wee stripe at all, they go mad. That's what happens once they get, get to become lieutenants. Yeah. They forget about the troops. They forget about us. Yeah, absolutely. I'll never forget about you. No, I know you're not. Yeah, I'm listening to you for last over 20 years. No, you're not. So I'm just... No, you're not. I'm just... I'm, I'm, I haven't been on the radio that yeah. long, for oh, God's sake. Oh, no, do you, you think are. I am Methuselah? Yeah, oh, yeah, and I'll tell you, you're aged to you, you're 56, but only 57. How dare you? No, I'm just telling you the truth. How dare you, to spreading lies like that? I'm not spreading them, just telling them. I'm going to turn you off if you're going to persist in this kind of calumny. No, you still love me. I do love you, I always I have know done. You do, okay, I, I prefer the old dolls. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you don't love me, but I'm not an old dog. None of this young flesh for me. <laughs> no, it's too uh, oh, yeah, too sensitive. No, okay, well, thank you. Go away now, then. Oh, yeah, Bye. 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 Will you Bye. say hello to all the girls? For yes, me? yes. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 For God's sake, you're not getting anybody on the phone. Well, you talk, I, I think you're still distorting. I'm not distorting. You're, you're distorting in, I'm my, not in, distorting. My, in my cans. We talked to Judith. 